But let me remind everyone, I-24 will be at APAC and providing complete coverage. So keep your TV tuned to I-24 for interviews and live coverage from the convention beginning this Sunday. And joining me now is Jenna Ellis. She's a constitutional lawyer. She joins us from Denver. And here on the set with us right now is Michael Brooks. He is a host of The Michael Brooks Show on YouTube, and he's a co-host of The Majority Report. Thank you so much both for being here. You know, we want to talk about APAC at length, but uh, I want to ask you both first about the Mueller report. The attorney general now has it. Congress could see it as soon as this weekend in some form or another. Uh, the question is, what form will we see it in? Will we see a redacted form? Will we see uh, just a summary? Or, and what should be released? Uh, Jenna, let's start with you. Yeah, well, uh, this really depends on what's contained in the report, and this isn't entirely up to the discretion of the attorney general. Uh, when the uh, when the special counsel changed and Congress refused to um, to actually allow um, the independent counsel law, uh, when that when that just was uh, sunset, and now that there's a special counsel law, then Robert Mueller reports directly to the <clears throat> attorney general, and he has an obligation under law to make sure that nothing that is classified and nothing that would uh, go against um, grand jury secrecy or executive privilege is released in the report. So it has to go through this mandated legal scrub before Congress can even see it, before anyone else certainly in the public can see it. So the bottom line here, Eric, is really that this is something that's mandated by law. And if we see a redacted or a different version that comes in uh, the next two weeks, this isn't because the attorney general is uh, in some, you know, somehow wanting to hide anything or shield anything from the public or Congress. This is because the law is written that way. Michael, is anything less than a full reveal going to be adequate for Democrats, do you think? I mean, look, clearly it won't be, just even politically speaking, and obviously one would be foolish to trust the motivations or the transparency of this administration. But I will make two quick broader points. One, uh, for my side, as it were, in terms of reality, if this was a Democratic president and you had major figures going to prison, lying to Congress, and you had just had Barack Obama, I don't know, uh, being photographed with a uh, woman who's suspected of, of being a human trafficker in Florida, I think there'd be a lot of hay going around uh, on the other side of the equation. That being said, I think, unfortunately, some of my sort of uh, fellow members of the Democratic Party went too in on this. I mean, there are any number of things to attack Donald Trump on uh, throughout every part of his career, and I'm sure you could find any number of misconduct and wrongdoing, but you didn't know the degree to which what would be disclosed on Russia, and I think people's sort of surety on it wasn't strategic, and in fact, this has revealed a lot of serious problems and serious misconduct, but maybe not in that extreme Degree. All right, uh, we want to move on to APAC. We've got a lot to talk about regarding the conference now. We uh, sure no do. Notable Democratic <clears throat> hopefuls will not be attending. President Trump addressed that. Let's listen in. The Democrats have very much proven to be anti Israel. There's no question about that. And it's a disgrace. I mean, what? I don't know what's happened to them, but they are totally anti Israel. Frankly, I think they're anti Jewish. <laughs> Jenna, uh, let's start with you. A fair statement? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the Democratic Party, they're getting so further down the progressive leftist rabbit hole, and they, the uh, leadership of the Democratic Party now is taking their <clears throat> cues from um, these extreme progressive liberals who clearly have um, anti-Semitism uh, that that has just been running rampant. They have um, nothing that's about the U.S. Totally Constitution or statement. anything. You know, and that's well, and if totally I can finish, I mean, that's that's well, you why can't the finish House resolution like had you're to come need to in. Check you know, that. and so and. And, and I, I can finish that. my comment, right. but that's um, but but that's where the House resolution uh, really needed to call out specific, like Representative Omar, like Why Tlaib, so and all these who have these these anti-Semitism um, issues. And so when we're looking at this, Eric, um, we need to to make sure to understand that the Democrats need to get on board with being pro-Israel like they used to be, like America has always stood for in our nation's history. And so I think that the president's remarks were absolutely appropriate. Well, first of all, you know, it's Regardless of the interruptions it, Well, here. first of all, it's extraordinary uh, to say that a president where the victims of a terrorist act at a synagogue specifically requested he not come 
is certainly not the person to be speaking about this. But more broadly, when you use the word mainstream, and you need to do some work in the style guide on your segments before I come on, over 70% of American Jews are opposed to the occupation. They're opposed to racially discriminatory policies in Israel. Now, if you were an actual friend of Israel, not an enabler of the far-right, extremist, dangerous ethno-state it's evolving into every day, you would have listened to Ehud Olmert and Ehud Barak, who said to you over 10 years ago, the reality is, is that most American Jews are not comfortable with an apartheid state. That is what it is in terms of reality. If you occupy another group of people, over 5 million people indefinitely, control their movements, have two sets of laws, that's what that word means. So let's be rational and calm about it and reality-based. If you wanted to protect Israel from being in this position, you would have restrained it from the far-right dangerous path it's on. And the reality is, is that the mainstream of the Democratic Party, and increasingly the United States, is uncomfortable with overt racial discrimination, ethno-nationalism, and sort of religious-based governance of any kind. So if you want to maintain a consensus on Israel, Israel's going to need to get back into a global mainstream. Or does it want to be aligned with the far right in Europe and Trump and Steve King, which it seems where Netanyahu is? I don't think it's where a lot of Israelis are, but it's not where the Democratic Party well, is. What kind of message do you think this it. sends, though, to Jews in America? Well, who, as again, who... over 70% of Jews in America oppose these policies. Let's, let's be really clear about this. It sends a message to... Christian far-right fanatics who want Israel to exist so it can facilitate the rupture. That's literally true. And it sends a message to extremists like Sheldon Adelson who have a far-right ethno-nationalist vision. If most, is, if most Jewish Americans vote Democratic, oppose the occupation, they either support a real no-nonsense two-state solution or full democracy in Israel and Palestine, what this sends... You know, is and, and the Eric message Jenna, that right. this sends the message this that segment. this sends the message you know, that please, please this isn't the mainstream. They should be at J Street, not APAC. Let's right, be Jenna. clear. Okay. All right. So, so Eric, if we, if we want to just not let the other side filibuster the segment and use, you know, words like, you know, extremism and no, all of these other the leftist talking questions. points, I mean, that's, that's actually the, that's, that's absolutely inappropriate. And this isn't just about one religion over another. This is recognizing that the nation of Israel uh, is the nation of Israel. And President Trump was absolutely right to bring the capital back to Jerusalem. We have historically, as an American country, been very pro-Israel. And for the democratic progressive leftist, these young up-and-coming, uh, you know, uh, Muslim women who have other priorities and who are, um, you know, who are wanting to drive the Democratic Party. I think it's very telling that none of the presidential candidates are actually attending APAC so that they can bridge that divide, look more moderate, and understand that they need to hear from the pro-Israeli lobby. The fact that they are taking anti-Semitic remarks and they're it not specifically calling that out in the House, not in the House resolution, that's... that's at some point, we got to have That's absolutely facts untrue. Here. Hillary Clinton, even, the two, even in the 2016 do not campaign, right she policies, went it is to APAC. not mainstream. All right. So why not go there? Yeah. And we're we're, we're, we're going to end it right there. I, I, I applaud you both Muslim on continuing on with your last train of thought, though. Well done. All right. Jenna Ellis, Michael Brooks, we thank you. We'd love to give you more time. Uh,